Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to format and align text in columns in Windows MS Word. Before delving to the main tutorial of the video, let us have some background about multiple columns and what are the benefits of using these options in MS Word. In Microsoft Word, the multiple columns option allows you to divide your document into two or more vertical columns. This feature is particularly useful when creating documents like newsletters, brochures, or flyers where a multi-column layout can enhance readability and visual appeal. One of the key benefits of using multiple columns is that it can help you make more efficient use of space, especially in documents where you want to maximize content without making the text too dense or overwhelming. Columns can also improve the overall organization of your document, making it easier for readers to navigate and find information. Another advantage is the flexibility it offers in terms of text flow. You can choose to have the text flow from one column to the next automatically, which can be useful for creating a more cohesive reading experience. Additionally, you can easily adjust the width and spacing of the columns to suit your needs, giving you greater control over the layout of your document. The multiple columns option in Microsoft Word is a valuable tool for creating visually appealing and well-organized documents, particularly for those that require a more complex layout than a single column can provide. In the process of creating a Word document, I have carefully crafted several paragraphs to ensure a cohesive flow of information. To enhance the visual appeal and readability of the document, I have decided to format it into multiple columns. By doing so, I aim to optimize the use of space and create a more engaging layout for the reader. Despite my efforts, the document currently spans only one page. However, I am confident that by implementing a multi-column format, I can effectively utilize the available space and present the content in a more organized and visually appealing manner. Now, in order for us to work on multiple columns, I will be doing two. First of all, select the text that I would like to convert into multiple columns. So here, I have selected the text. Then I am going to be clicking on the Page Layout tab. Then I will be clicking on Columns and I will be picking two. As soon as I click to notice, my selected text now moves into two columns. I have several other options to work with columns. For example, I can click in columns and make three columns. I can click on columns and choose left. I can click on columns and choose right or I can go under more columns and let us see if I want to work with four columns so I can just make it four columns where the right column is smaller in width than the left columns and then I will click OK. Here. My entire document is in four columns. I can go back to the columns. I can make more columns. Each of my columns have different widths. In addition, I can change them around if I want all of them to be equally spaced. And let us say I choose them to be all equal space. Also, I can now make it four, five, six, or seven columns. Whatever number of columns that I want, I am going to distribute it accordingly. This time, let me switch it back to 2 now and let us explore one more feature in the columns area where all will be going under columns and choosing more columns again. This time, I will be turning on the line between options. The purpose of lines between options in columns is to visually separate each option, making it easier for the reader to distinguish between them. This helps improve readability and comprehension especially when presenting a list of choices or information in a tabular format. The line serves as visual cues that guide the reader's eyes as they can scan across the options, aiding in better organization and understanding of the content. When it turns on the line between option and a click OK notice, it inserts a line between the columns and gets all the way across that way, so this is how you can create any text into multiple columns and you can always switch it back to one column. Here you go, and you can always switch it back to however you want to choose, and you can divide it up to into multiple columns. Next part is we are going to be learning how to apply column bricks. So before we finish it off, column bricks are usually used to push a content to a new column before reaching the end of the column. So let us say my insertion point is currently over here, which is not the end of the column. And it can be anywhere but in this video, I will just choose here. Then I will be clicking in the Page Layout tab and then Breaks. And click Column Break 
And notice this automatically becomes the last line of the column and it jumps to whatever content we are following. Jumps to the next columns beginning similarly. It rather stops here and wraps around the reason is because I had selected data to start with. As you can see, my columns are not flowing all the way to the bottom and instead of going all the way to the bottom, it rather stops here and wraps around. Do you know what the reason is? The reason is because I had selected data to start with. So what it automatically does is, as I turn on the formatting, it is in the home tab and the symbol is like an inverted P. That is formatting. As I click it, it automatically does this for me. This is cool. All the section break, continuous section break is up like for me as I come out of here. Right now, whatever is between the heading up, tap and down here, that is basically what is in the two columns. Anything outside of this is back to one column. So this is what automatically inserts for me in the section continuous break. In case you want to apply a section continuous break, and that is usually used to have different number of columns flowing around on the same page. So in order to apply that, you go to the page layout tab and you go under breaks and then you choose continuous. This will let you break the sequence of your current documents page without leaving that page. And you can then go about going to the different column count. Then what your current column count is set and you can see quite evident over here. And that's it. I hope this helps. And before we end this video, please do share, like, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.